Today I'd like to talk to you about evolution. Now evolution is a scientific theory, it's a scientific proposal to explain the numerous number of living things that surround us today. Now there are about, oh, I think scientists estimate between 10 and 14 million different kinds of things, living things in the world today. And evolution is the proposal that all of these things appeared over a long period of time through a gradual process of change. Now when my students ask me about evolution, they often ask me, you know, why, why do I think that evolution is true? And I think evolution is true because there's just a lot of evidence for it. There's fossil evidence, there's biochemical evidence, there's genetic evidence, there's even geographical evidence. And all you have to do is look up any decent biology textbook to be introduced to some of that evidence. Now, it's important for me to emphasize, though, that this evolutionary process, this evolutionary process fell under the providence of God because God created all of these living things through evolution. My students here at Providence College often ask me, why did God choose to create through evolution rather than the process of special creation that's described in the first couple of chapters of the book of Genesis? And to answer this question, I think I'm going to borrow the thought of my Dominican brother, the great philosopher and theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, who lived about 750 years ago. Now, St. Thomas certainly didn't know about evolution, but he could look around his own world, our world, and he saw all these amazing, beautiful, living things. And he asked this question, why did God create so many different kinds of living things? Why did he create so many different kinds of things at all? And he said, you know, the reason why he did this is because God created all these things so that they could best reflect his wisdom, his power, his creativity, his genius. And because God is an infinite being, he couldn't limit himself. And so he created all of this diverse multitude of things because together they reflect him better. And to illustrate this, I asked my students, look, if you wanted to understand a painter, would you rather look at one of his paintings or would you rather look at an entire gallery of his paintings? And they say, well, we'd rather look at a gallery of his paintings. And so, and, and the reason why is because a, a still life, a landscape, a portrait, all of these reflect the creativity and ingenuity of the, of the, of the painter in different ways. And in the same way, I think St. Thomas would say that a process of evolution allowed God to display five billion different living things, five different living paintings over an extended period of time, uh, several billion years, that would not have been possible if he decided to put them all in the gallery at the same time. And so that's why. You know, we mustn't forget, though, that at the end of the day, um, as Christians, we believe that God did all of this, not only to give glory to himself, but to prepare the world for us, because we are his greatest creation, um, the greatest living and visible creation, primarily because we are the only ones who can come and know and love him. And that's the great mystery of it all, that in the process of evolution over three and a half billion years, that was all put together so that God could create a human baby. My name is Father Nick Ostriaco, and this has been Seek and Find.